In this lecture, I will explain about thermal stresses and cyclic thermal stresses. What is thermal stress? What is cyclic thermal stress? Huh? Let us see. I just write the title, today's title or this lecture's title as thermal stresses and cyclic thermal stresses. We will see this lecture in two parts. The part one will be thermal stresses, how it is produced, and let us see what is called a thermal stress. And the second part is cyclic thermal stress. How the thermal stress cycle is produced, we will see, right? And the effect of thermal uh, thermal stress cycle, right? So first we will see what is thermal stress. Okay. We will see thermal stress. Let's see what is thermal stress, right? Let us assume your shaft is there, right? Your shaft is there like this, right? We will assume the shaft is there like this. We will assume the shaft is there like this, right? And on this shaft, I'm sorry, this should be this way. Okay, it is like this, right? Like this, right? So let us assume a shaft is there, and a ring has to be inserted over this shaft. Right, so a ring means how big the ring can be. So the ring can be like this, right? So the ring can be like this, right? The ring can be like this, right? The ring can be like this, right? That means the shaft ends somewhere here, right? And the ring is like this, right? This ring, we want to insert it over the shaft, right? This is ring. We want to ring to, uh, to insert the ring to insert the ring over the shaft. Right? To insert the ring over the shaft. Right? To insert the ring, if the ring ID inside diameter is slightly less than the shaft outside diameter, then the ring will not enter. Right? So for that what we do, we now heat the ring, right, heat the ring, heat the ring and insert it over the shaft, heat the ring and insert it over the shaft. When you see heat the ring, what will happen? What will happen? The ring will expand, thermally expand, right? When the ring OD will increase when you heat it, the ring ID also will increase. The ring size, the ring diameter will increase, right? The heated ring is inserted over the shaft, right? And allowed to cool, right? Heat the ring and insert it over the shaft and allow it to cool, right? And allow it to cool. 
right? When it cools, what will happen? The ring will shrink, right? The ring will shrink, and the same ring of insertion, right? Uh, what will happen? Uh, or the ring is expanded, and I am trying to insert the shaft inside, right? Insert the shaft inside. Then what will happen? The shaft will come like this, and will enter through this ring, right? And it will come out like this. Right, do you understand? Uh, so the ring will, when it is slowly cools, it will grip the shaft tightly. Right? When it grips the shaft, shaft tightly, what will happen? The shaft will not allow you to shrink. Right? So because of this, the thermal shrinking is uh, restricted by the shaft. Right? So the ring will try to shrink but it will try to and it will tightly grip over the shaft and stresses will be induced in the ring right what sort of stresses will be induced in the ring uh, in the ring in the ring uh, uh, circumferential uh, circumferential Tensile stresses will be induced, right? Circumferential tensile stresses induced, right? Do you understand? The ring in ring, right? Circumferential tensile stresses are induced, right? Whereas on the shaft, what will happen? Circumferential compressive stresses will be induced, right? Because the shaft will be compressed by the ring, and so circumferential compressive stresses will be induced. And in the ring, circumferential tensile stresses will be induced. Why this is induced? It is because the ring is trying to shrink, but the shaft is not allowing it to shrink, right? That is why uh, stresses are induced. And why this happens? The temperature is trying to come down as it cools, and and because thermally the the, the heat the, the heat heat is transferred from the ring to the atmosphere. And the temperature comes down, and uh, it uh, grips the shaft very tightly. And because of this, stresses are induced, right? Uh, the so whole thing has happened because uh, thermal contraction is not allowed, and so stresses are produced. So these stresses are called thermally induced stresses or thermal stresses, right? So this is how. So in the shaft, thermal compressed circumferential. Compressive stresses are induced in the ring. Circumferential uh, tensile stresses are induced. Both the stresses are thermal stresses only. Now, I will explain how the cyclic thermal stresses are induced in a boiler feed pipe. Right? Let us assume your boiler is there like this. Right? This is a boiler. Right? And it's standing like this. Right? And let there be feed pipe inlet somewhere like this, right? So I draw the pipe in different color. Let us assume the pipe, sorry, the pipe comes out like this, right? The pipe comes out like this, right? And the pipe is coming down like this, right? And let me assume the feed pump is somewhere here, right? This is the feed pump, right? This is the feed pump, right? This is the feed pump is kept somewhere here, right? So this is the feed pump, right? So this is feed pump. And this is feed pipe or feed water pipe. Feed water pipe. Right? So, let us assume the boiler is working, right, and hot water is pumped through this feed pipe, right, hot, hot water is pumped by the pump and it is fed inside the boiler, right, let us assume, 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 hot water is pumped. Inside the boiler, into the boiler, right? Into the boiler, right? 
So what will happen? When the hot water is formed, the line will get heated and so the entire length of the feed pipe will expand, right? And the length of the pipe will increase. Where this length of the pipe will be accommodated, so it will result in bending this nozzle, right? So understand, so this nozzle will bend and the whole length increase has to be taken care of by bending this nozzle like this, right? So the nozzle should bend upwards like this and the entire pipe length should be accommodated, right? So when the boiler is started, when the boiler is running, when the hot water is pumped being pumped inside, what will happen? So the pipe length would have increased and, uh, and uh, this nozzle will try to prevent the increase in length and so uh, compressive stresses should have been induced in this feed pipe, right? Now let us assume the boiler is shut down, right? So boiler is stopped, right? Then well, let us assume the boiler cools for some 2 or 4 hours or 5 hours, something like that. So then what will happen? The feed water inside this pipe will get cool to atmospheric temperature, right? During which time what will happen? The length of the pipe will once again come back to its original length, right? So when it comes to original length, the stresses will have been relaxed totally, right? So when the boiler is started, slowly the compressive stress would have increased reach the maximum and when the, uh, the stresses would have been present for quite some time right and the boiler when it is shut down the stresses would have come down right and it, uh, totally uh, the stresses would have reached zero uh, when that, uh, when the whole boiler everything comes to room temperature right so here what happens you have one cycle of stress has produced has been produced when the boiler has been started and shut down right so the compressive shutdown stresses would have, would have reached the maximum and then once again it would have come down and there is a no more stresses would have been there, right? Like this, you you uh, every day you let us assume you start the boiler and stop an industrial boiler, right? So every day one thermal cycle happens, right? One thermal cyclic stress happens, right? So like this, if 365 days you operate, 365 times thermally cyclic thermal stresses are induced, right? So these cyclic thermal stresses are very much dangerous because it increases the, the strain in the system uh, and once again the strain is brought down, right? So uh, this is so this sort of uh, the strain undergoing through a cycle is because of the cyclic thermal stress, right? Let's assume uh, uh, when such thermal stresses are induced, let us know how we will tackle tackle this problem, right? So here, see in the boilers, that is why when the, uh, the pump is not straight away placed below the feed pipe, uh, feed nozzle, right? And so generally it is placed away, right? From the boiler, right? Generally it is placed away from the boiler, right? And see the pump, the boiler, the pipeline, you know, the pipeline, right? So it is taken through so many bends like this, right? It is taken through bends like this, right? It is taken through bends like this, right? And finally, the feed from the feed pump uh, will be connected of the so many bends like this, right? Of so many bends like this, right? So your feed pump is somewhere like this, right? This is feed pump. So, when so many bends are there, you know, what will happen? Huh? What will happen? The, these bends will take care of, see, the bend will, at each L bend, huh, the expansion will be, huh, it will flux, this pipe will flux at the bend, right? And these stresses will be taken care of by the bends in the pipe, right? So, this is how thermal stresses are reduced in the case of feed water line. Purposely, the pipe would have been taken, so many bends would have been introduced in the feed water line, feed water pipeline, right? So, when you do that, so all these bends will take the thermal stresses, right? Uh, and uh, the thermal stresses will not shoot up beyond, uh, very, very high, and induced thermal stresses will be minimum, right? 
So the uh, this pipeline also when the, the boiler is started and shut down, right? Uh, every day once in once in every day. Here also uh, this is subjected to uh, cyclic thermal stress, right? So now we will see, hmm? not only in boiler, I tell you, hmm? thermal, uh, cyclic thermal stresses are reduced in so many other equipments as well, right? You take the case of our household AC, air conditioner, right? There, when the AC is switched on, right, the pipelines inside the, or the tubes inside, uh, they will go, they will be taken to lower temperature than the atmosphere, right? And the AC, AC, AC air conditioner is stopped. Once again, they reach the uh, uh, atmospheric temperature, right? So whenever the air, the air conditioner is stopped and started again, right? Well, one th thermal cycle of stress has happened, right? Similarly, you take the case of household fridge, right? In the fridge also, uh, that uh, yeah, the coils undergo the thermal cyclic stresses. They go and they undergo lower temperature and the room atmospheric temperature alternatively. Then they also undergo thermal cyclic stresses. You take the case of geyser, uh, geyser, right? That is your uh, heater, water heater, uh, placed in your uh, over uh, placed over it in your toilet, right? So a 10 liter heater, water heater, geyser or geyser uh, or a 25 liter geyser, right? That also each time when you switch on, uh, heat the water and use it the water for taking bath, right? And switch on the switch off the uh, geyser, right? Whenever you switch on and off the geyser, right? Uh, it undergoes through one thermal cycle, right? So I have so, told so many examples of cyclic stresses, right? A geyser undergoes, my geyser coils and geyser tank undergoes thermal cyclic stresses, right? And your fridge coils undergo thermal cyclic stresses and an air conditioner coils undergo thermal cyclic stresses, right? Uh, like that, the boiler feed pipe and everything undergo thermal cyclic stresses, right? So this is this is not only in the case of feed pipe, and I'll tell you another example, right? The steam pipelines or uh, uh, in industries, so many hot water lines will be there. Uh, sorry, high temperature fluid lines will be there, right? For example, let us assume a steam pipe is taken through a long length like this, right? Let this be steam pipe, right? So what will happen? So I tell you. Uh, every, for every 100 degrees centigrade, the pipes and, and, uh, expand by 1 mm for every 100 degrees centigrade, right? If the pipe length is say 40 meter, so for 100 degree, how much will be the increase? 40 mm, uh, the uh, length of the pipe will increase, right? And you take, the, for example, if the temperature of the steam is say 300 degrees centigrade, 40 into 3, so 120 mm, this much length, the pipe length will increase, right? So how is that accommodated? Right to take the to take care of the exp the thermal expansion. See the pipe is then and then taken by a loop like this, right? It is taken through a loop like this, right? The, then and then it is taken through a loop like this, right? So these loops, you know, uh, these uh, it will bend here in the loop, right? And it will take care of the thermal expansion, right? So these loops, loops. Take care of thermal expansion, right? Take care of thermal expansion. Thermal expansion, right? Right? These loops take care of thermal expansion, right? Yeah, and I tell you one more example, right? So, uh, this is regarding steam pipe, right? I'll take the case of ducts, right? Flue gas ducts, big ducts. Air hot air ducts or flue gas ducts, right? So these flue gas ducts, you know, when long lengths are there, you know, in between, a thermal expansion joint will be introduced like this, right? So thermal expansion joint will be introduced like this, right? Do you understand? So thermal expansion joints, right? So these joints will be like this, right? So it will be like this, right? The duct will continue like this, right? See, uh, for example, if the duct is like this, a thermal expansion joint will be like this, right? Like this, a joint with a V-shaped, uh, uh, this one, uh, thermal expansion 
joint will be introduced. Right? So when the whole duct uh, uh, expands like this or compresses like this, this V part of it, you know, it will shrink or expand and take the uh, differ, uh, length variations, right? Due to the, due to temperature, right? This is your term, this uh, this is your thermal expansion joint, and this the same thing is this. This is thermal expansion joint, right? So these thermal expansion joints, you know, they go undergo cyclic stresses, right? Now, and here also these loops, you know, steam pipe where it is made as a loop, you know, these loops are also undergoing thermal expansion stresses, right? So when the steam is going high, hot steam is going inside. Uh, the term here, this whole pipe length will increase, and so they, these pipes will bend like this, right? It will bend like this and take the expansion, right? And when the steam is uh, stopped, uh, and when the industry is closed in the night time or something like that, and when the, the pipeline comes to atmospheric temperature, once again it will reach the original position, right? Like this, thermal cyclic stresses are induced, right? These thermal cyclic stresses are very, very dangerous, right? And in a power plant, if you take uh, the entire boiler system, right, has to not generally operate throughout 365 days continuously, right? Whereas if it is uh, stopped for maintenance or something like that, the whole power plant boiler, everything ducting, right, undergoes one thermal cyclic stress, right? So such a huge system when it undergoes thermal cyclic system stresses, it is very very critical, right? So even an industrial boiler it may not be, it may be less critical, whereas in the power plant it's very very critical, right? So too often we should not stop the power plant and start the power plant, right? Because the whole uh, system will be stressed and strained, right? So this is how uh, uh, given a uh, complete uh, explanation about cyclic thermal stresses uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the effect of thermal cyclic stresses right and the effect of thermal stresses also uh, I have also explained to you how we can minimize thermal stresses by adopting loops like this or thermal expansion joints like this or inducing bends or introducing bends like this right like that I have explained to you how we can manage thermal stresses or minimize thermal stresses right and only thing to avoid thermal cyclic stresses is not to too often start and start and stop the system, right? So it is better to all thermal system, high temperature systems, it is better that we run it continuously throughout the year to avoid unnecessary uh, cyclic thermal stresses induced in it, right? Thank you.